Welcome back folks, welcome back to another Magic the Gathering um, pack opening. This time we're going to be opening the Wilds of Eldorin. Now, last week we did a full pack opening of like all the other packs and that did take a while, but let's be honest guys, the amount of packs I had, it did take a while. Now, as far as decks go guys, I will be focusing on looking into those decks. If any decks need to be upgraded or any decks need to be fixed, we will have to look at that because half the decks I've got like... The ones I was working on will no longer be effective because some are either not usable in alchemy or usable only in alchemy and some are used in standard. So I'm going to have to, you know, look what's what and work out from there. Now, we have 10 mythic packs, 35 normal attacks, and 4 gold packs. So let's start with the gold packs. Let's get them out of the way, shall we? Ooh, a mythic too. River Rivendale. That's from Lord of the Rings, Lizard Land. Mm. It's alright, but Oh come on. Elven Chorus. Yeah, I... four mana for a for a ability says the look of the top four cards of like any time you may cast a creature spell from the top of your library. Creature you control have mana colour. Yeah. I mean, it's good at a mana ramp deck, but that's as far as it goes. But it's only for alchemy because it's not for standard. Because we do standard here. All right, we got one of the new cards, Song of Tatarzin. Now this is from I think this is from the new set actually. Create red X, which is create X black rat tokens. This creature cannot be blocked. So and against haste. So pretty much like the Pied Piper. Oh, we have another new one from the, from the new set. <coughs> Human Fairy. Now, the Fairy have been the main thing of this new set. So, free mana for a 2 2. Not always great. Oakies gain plus one uh, for each aura. So, basically, this is a guy who works with auras or an equipment attached to Keelan. Mm hmm. So basically, Oki's get plus one deal for each aura or enchantment. So basically, if you flood this guy with enchantments or abilities, he's going to give us buffs. Alright. And he has double strike. Not too bad. Brightness boom. Saucy adventure. Search your library for an aura equipment card. Reveal it. Put it into your hand and shuffle. Not bad card. I might look into that kind of deck. Invasion of, um, of Tikiria. We know this one very well. Order to the multiverse. Hey, Naharin. So we got Naharin completed. So, three mana. So, four mana. So, it can be paid with red, white, or any color plus a gray. So, basically, it's a planeswalker. Until the next turn, up to one tall creature attack play each combat if available. Okay. Discard a card and draw a card. Zero, exile target creature or equipment card with mana value less than Noro's loyalty from your graveyard. Create a token of a copy. The token gains haste. Exile it at the beginning of next step. So, no downside, but a lot of upside. But there is a catch. It's going to be one of those cards where kill on sight. Or you're going to have to be very smart how to use it. Dismiss. Go pack two. Two mythics this time. The Goose Mother, another new card. Flying. Legendary creature, Bird Hydra. You know, I think Alfred Hitchcock would have a field day if he saw that. But anyhow, Flying 2 2 for Green Blue, so Simic. And X. What's the X for? Oh, in this battlefield with X amount of counts on it, so that's the X part. When Goose enters the battlefield, create half the food tokens around whatever Goose is attacked. Good lord. So basically, if you want, you could pay, say, 5 mana for this guy. Yeah, he's a 2-2, two -two, but he can get become a 5-5, five -five plus all those tokens. And when you sacrifice it, you're going to get um, a card when he attacks. That's kind of a very nasty card, but it requires a lot of mana to make him work. And you've got to have to... Bring around like turn four or something to make it worth his wild. City on fire. Okay, for stars, 
8 mana, it's never going to happen. Unless you have a lot of weenies to make it happen. But if the Sorcerer Control would deal damage to a permanent or player, it deals triple damage instead. It all sounds well and good, guys, but that's a bad card. I would say that's more along the lines of... Like, if you've got somehow a lot of wieners and you've got that, like, say you got five or six wieners. Then, yeah, that could be worth it, but mm, kind of a mi mixed bag. I wouldn't say it's the one of the best ones, to be honest. Cool here, Grix. We know you all too well, because we use them a lot in the Dark Despair deck. Which, surprisingly enough, is still legal. It just means now I have to look at other cards to buff it up. Funa's, Funa's Bane Troll. 4 mana for 4-4. Four, four. Standard. But what else do you have? When Funa's Jet enters the battlefield, create a, mon create a monster rogue token attached to it. Sacrifice the aura attached to Funa Troll and fight a target creature you don't control. If the creature would die this turn, exile instead. Right. So basically, you put this on him. He becomes 5-5, five, five, has trample. Hmm. To be honest, yeah, it's a good way for an assassination, but why would you want to get rid of a plus one plus one has trample? Why would you? I mean, there are other enchantments he could use, but that's kind of like, hmm, why would I want to get rid of something that's going to make me 5-5 five, five and practically trample people's skulls in? I don't think I would. All right, next one. Now, this is a new one. Venture of Knowledge. Five mana. So it's got two versions, so it's an enchantment. If a permanent enters a battlefield, causes trigger abilities of a permanent you control, trigger that ability an additional time. So basically, if you've got like a lot of trigger abilities with that odds, it's gonna make a lot of like chaos. Like say for example, you got one that says, right, if I play this, I get the scry twice. So if I don't like the two cards and give it them and then scry again to the next two cards, that kind of thing. Copy target active or trigger ability you may control, you may choose a new target of its copy. So it's all about controlling triggers. And we know you, Platoon Dispenser. We know you all too well. Oh, thank you. One ring to rule them all. We know you very well. Yep, yeah, we know you. Hey, Mother Goose again. Well, looks like Civic Mother Goose could get some run. Okay, two mana for a 2-2, two, two. always good. Green. Sorcery. Tall creature gains plus, plus X plus until the end of turn where X is the number of creatures you control. That's not bad. Creatures you, creature tokens you control gets plus one, plus one. So, if you're playing a, um, like, if people's got, like, lots of tokens on them, they're go that thing's going to make them buff. But it sounds like this is the guy you have to kill on sight. And no wonder he's a bloody rare, legend, a rare, but good lord, that is a good card. Cue the Flame Sage. Free mana for two free. Enlist, so, okay, it's got some perks, but what do you do? When when killed on Flame Sage attacks, look at the top X card to your library where X is Q's power. Fair enough. You may exile an S associate card with the amount of X less from the amount, okay? Press the bottom of your library. In random order, you may cast the exile card without paying its mana cost. Mm, yeah, nah, not great. Don't get me wrong, a 2 3 is still good, but and we list, but ability is kind of like meh. You gotta have a lot of like cheap, like stuff to use, so yeah, it's a meh. And we know you. And the last go park. Okay, Hildra's Crown of Winter, free mana. It's a legendary artifact, so it's rare. One tap target creature. This ability can cost one less to activate during your turn. Right, so basically you could just go right, boom. I could just do that, tap someone, or free sacrifice the crown, draw a card for each tap creature. Ooh, I could see its potential here. Now hear me out. Let's say your opponent tries to go for a death swing, but fails. And you somehow survive, and he's got a lot of tap crit. You pay free, blow it, and get a lot of cards to pretty much buff up your hand for, for get out of jail cards or defense. So I can see it's potential. 
All right, Lino waste. So we got a black red lamp. Good. Play black green lamp. Yep. You again? No, got two of you. Ooh, what's this? Weather light completed. So it's a flying energy artifact vehicle. As long as weather light complete has four more f pariah counters on it, it's Phyrexian creature in addition to other types. Whenever you creature control dies, put a pariah counter complete, then draw a card. If it has seven or more counters on it, it doesn't if it doesn't scry one. For two mana cards, so basically if you lose creatures, it gets power. Interesting, interesting. And clay champion. That's all them. Now we get to the main business. Now I'm gonna open the mythics last, so let's get to the main business. Hi fair negotiator. So this is a five mana black bargain. Now this is the new mechanic bargain. You may sacrifice an artifact, enchantment, or token as it will cast a spell. Alright. So basically we've got to have something to cat to get rid of it, alright? So it's got flying. Mm, I'm not liking the look of that. So basically, if this is the game that's saying you've got to have artifacts and enchantments to use him, so alright. When High Fate negotiate enters the battlefield, if it was bar oh, it's a choice. Good. Bargain each opponent loses free life, you gain free life. A good seal card, but normal deck card, probably not. There are better five drops. So just like you know, Grix's command and all that are better. I mean, don't get me wrong, a 5 feet flyer is always good, but not one of the best. Skill Slinger. Two mana for a one free with reach. Okay, that's not too bad. That's kind of a decent blocker. Whenever Skill Slinger blocks or becomes blocked by a creature, it deals one damage to that creature. So basically, anyone with a two backside is going to get hurt, or if you've got flyers to slow them down. So I can see what it could be used for. Red cap thief. Now that, that that's a, actually from a fable lore, actually the red caps. <coughs> Anyhow, um, free mana for two three. When red cap enters the battlefield, create a treasure token. That's not a bad card actually. That's pretty good that because you get a treasure token to form out one well, mana and a two three for free is decent. It's like a good like chump blocker or <coughs> or something else. Borrow naughty. Borrow naughty. Yeah, so that's what your name is. Flight. Ooh, could get lifelink. Bone only has lifelink as long as you control another fairy. So basically, if it's in a fairy deck, he's going to get better. Bone only gets plus one until the other turn. So <clears throat> two mana for one free may not be good, but it's a fly and could get lifelink, so you could chip away for some life. But the one thing, the one attack can be an issue. But I could see other ways to go around. Like if you put in a black green deck, give it a boost. I could see it that way. Candy Trail, one mana. When Kajia enters the battlefield, scry 2, always good. Sacrifice Kajia, you gain free life and draw a card. Why wouldn't you? That is not a bad card. You play that turn 1, alright, I'll scry 2, see what I've got. Is there anything that's land? Yeah, there's land, I'll take that. Keep the other one in and then play a land, sacrifice it, gain free life and draw a card. So, that's not bad. Garax Uprising. <clears throat> Now, I'm assuming this is for legendary play because of the um, the emblem, because this cause artwork and emblem shows it's for legendary. When Garrick Uprising enters the battlefield, if you control a creature with four power greater, draw a card. Creatures you control have trample. Whenever a creature with four power greater enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. Um, okay, why do double that? I, it's a bit weird writing. <coughs> Raging Battle Mouse. A mouse, so we got the mouse family in now instead of rats. Two mana for two one. The second spell you cast each turn costs one less. Celebration. At the beginning of combat, on your turn, if you have two or more non land permanents enter the battlefield under your control this turn, it's plus one plus one. So it requires you to have other like non creature stuff to work with them, but a two mana for two one is not always a bad thing, guys. It's a good like early aggression card. But, um, yeah, let's move on. <coughs> this is going to be a while, guys, so sit down and enjoy the show. <coughs> yeah, we know you, Vicious, Vi Vicious Vitality. We've already seen you before. So I target creature and opponent controls with two of us. I, like I said before, guys, this is one of these cards where 
it's going to require you to have a, a oh, against a weenie deck, but not very well against that. But this is the new mechanic we're called Witch's Roll. When it's always put in the graveyard, each opponent loses a life. So, Witch's Mark, another Witch's Roll card. You may just discard two cards if you do draw two cards. Create, create a wicked uh, roll token attached to the one of target creatures you control. That's not bad when you think about it. If you've got like, a couple of jank cards, you can get rid of them. I can see this in the red black deck where you've got like some resurrections. Merfolk Coral Smith. Right, free mana for two fees is always good in blue. Ooh. So basically, you could trade it for a. Like, get stronger, but weaker backside. But also, when it dies, it's scry. So. <clears throat> I would say that's not a bad card. That's pretty good. Knightly Valor. <clears throat> A giant cre creature. When Knightly Valor enters the battlefield, create a 2 2 white knight. Creature token with vigilance. Fair enough. Enchanted creature gets plus 2 2 and vigilance. It's not bad, but the 5 mana. Nope, that's a killer. That is a pure killer because it's like costs too much. I would say that would be good if you like it's in the play it's in, but no. Not a good card. Collector's Vault. 2 mana. Artifact. Draw a card, then discard a card of creature's token. It's crap, guys. I'd rather take the food one, because that was better. It's not a great card. I mean, it's okay if you want to get a treasure. Like, you trade one off for treasure, but... And draw a card, but... Would you really want to waste, like, four mana on it? Rim for a reindeer. Four mana for a free four. Not so bad. Whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, tap a creature your opponent controls. I can see usage in this. The only problem is it's the four mana. If it was three mana, it would be brilliant. But four mana, it, that's gonna be something you're gonna have to really think about. Stormmuck Powder, two mana for a human rogue for two one, especially in blue, which is good. Whenever you cast a spell with mana with five five or greater, put two one. So basically, if you play this on turn four, then on turn five you play a spell, anything that's five or higher. That's going to get powerful. So, I can see the potential, but it's going to have to do a lot of work to get to it. <coughs> Sentinel of Lost Law. Free mana for 4 free. Okay, now this is an absolute beast for, for its price. But what is their abilities? When Sentinel of Lost enters the battlefield, choose one or more. Return target card, card from your own, your own in exile that has the adventure to your hand. Put target card, if you don't own an exile, it has an adventure on the bottom of its owner's library. Exile target player's graveyard. Right, so he is a good... Why wouldn't you have this guy? Exile in somebody's graveyard means they can't use graveyard shenanigans. And plus the fact, I mean, free mana for free four? Yeah, I would have that. That's a good card. That's quite powerful for its cost. <clears throat> If you weren't green, you would still have him because he's a he's a solid creature. Utopia Sprawl. One green. So it's from that other play. Enchanted Forest, as Utopia Sprawl enters the battlefield, choose a color. Whenever Enchanted Forest is tapped for that mana, its control adds an additional one of the cult chosen colors. So basically, if you're going for like a multicolor and you got like one green, you play that, go right. <coughs> I'll go say, let's say black. I now got green black, so I've got two mana on me. Let's go. That's a pretty good card. A very good card. Red 2 Vanguard. 2 mana for a free 1. Trample. Whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay 2 if you do return from your graveyard to your hand. Right. Here's what I think of this card. It's a double-edged sword. For 2 mana for a free 1 is good, but against anything that has like minus 1, minus 1, or a better, you know, backside or one attack it's going to kill it easy but the fact that you could bring it back for every enchantment you play can be good can be good bestowed knight so it's four mana human knight okay you are no monster to my love oh to me my love um okay this is interesting Real royal Roll token attached to the target creature you control. So it has ward and plus one plus one. Well, that's not too bad. That's actually pretty good. 
not dead after all. One mana, instant. Until the end of the turn, target creature gains whenever this creature dies, returns to the battlefield tap. And a wicked. Okay, I could see a very good, powerful ability with that. Say, say for example, you attack a creature and you know you're going to trade. You play that, go right. I'm not dying, but I'm going to get stronger with this creature. But yes, will. So, yeah, I could see uses in that. Bespoke Battle Garb. Two mana. Equipment. The Chinese creature gets plus two. two. Not bad. Celebration. At the beginning of your of combat step to you. That's base before. But it's different. Hmm. Under your control, this turn attach to target. So basically, if you're attacking and you've cast me, you just give it to someone or equip two. That's not too bad, but it's got to require a lot of things to get its celebration ability off. But 9 at 10, you're just going to pay for it. Twisted Sewer Witch. Okay, Human Warlock. 5 mana for a free form. Mm, okay, but what's his ability? Well, it just enters the battlefield, create 1-1 one, one black rat token. Cards will block. Then for each rat you control... Oh. Oh. Oh, interesting. This creature can't be blocked. Then for each rat you control, create a witch token. Attach it to that rat. For each rat? Hmm. I could see a use for her in a rat deck, but it's the cost. Five mana is a bit... Ooh, it's a little steep, in my own opinion. It's a bit steep. Spiteful Hex Mage. All right, with Spiteful Hex enters the battlefield, create a curse roll token attached to the creature control. Okay, why in God's green earth would you... Oh my god. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Let's forget about the free two and its one mana cost for a second. The fact that as soon as you play that card, it becomes useless. It is. The only way you're going to get any value out of him is you're going to need a creature, a sacrifice creature who's just going to die. Wow, uh, that's a bad card. Unless you have some way of giving it the curse, that's a bad card. That is a jank trash card. Alright, I'm back, guys. Sorry for the little jumping ending there. I had to oh, take it, someone from the door. So, alright, let's get back to it. <clears throat> alright, season growth. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, scry one. Whenever it Whenever you cast a spell that targets a creature you control, draw a card. Not too bad, actually. It's pretty good. <clears throat> Here we are. Graceful takedown. I wouldn't call that graceful, but... Anyhow, it's two mana. A number of target enchanted creatures you control up to one of a target creature you control. Each deals damage equal to their power to, cre to a target creature you control. So basically, guys, this is only good if you've got enchantment creatures. It's... Decent, but I would say Feral Bite is better. <clears throat> Water Wings. All right. Two mana for a instant. Hex proof as well. Ooh, nice. <clears throat> to the end of the turn, target creature you control gains a base power in terms of 4 4 flight and hex. <clears throat> Not a bad idea if you got like a little wiener, then suddenly you buffers with 4 4 to smack someone or kill someone. So it has potential. <clears throat> Troll Maker Ufa. Two mana for two two solid bargain as we all know. If Troublemaker over enters the battlefield, if it was bargain, exile target off that enchantment your opponent controls. <coughs> so basically, if you've got a weak artifact or something you don't like, like the food token which we talked about the Bubba Goose, combined with him, be nice because you go right. I mean, he is a solid two drop. Don't get me wrong, he is a solid two drop. <coughs> Fanatic Firebolt. Free mana, instant, fiber X deals damage to the target creature where X is 2 plus the number of cards in your graveyard that are instant cards, sorcery cards, and or an adventure card. <coughs> I'll be honest, that is quite powerful. I mean, think about it. I mean, if you got a lot of sorceries and in the in the deck, and... You fire that off, you're going to kill anything that's big and stonky. 
which is not bad. I would say that's a very good five buck card. Niv Miz will probably use it. Red Dex will probably use it because they've got a lot of instant sorceries. So I can see use this for Niv. Hey, <clears throat> Screen Puff. Five mana four four three Death Touch Horror. Whenever Screen Puff deals combat damage to a player, create a food token. Um. Apart from that, it looks absolutely disgusting. It's a good um, seal card, but not a good like main deck card. There are better cards out there, I'm afraid. <clears throat> and Galvanic Giant, Giant Wizard. So this is four mana for a free free, which is always not. It's not a bad card. That's a good trade. But what do you get? Whenever you cast a spell with mana five or greater, tap target creature your opponent controls and put a stun counter on it. Ooh. That's quite powerful. Or the adventure one, which is draw four cards, then discard two cards. Right, I'm going to be honest. Why the hell would you want to use, use the adventure? You would want to use the main ability, which is like, I play her. And if I don't get rid of her quickly, well, that's some problems I'm going to be dealing with. Free blind mice. <laughs> oh, it's off the old fable fairy tale. Free blind mice. Three blind mice. Oh my god, that's old. Anyhow, um, create a 1-1 one, one white mouse token. Create a token that is a copy of a token you control. Creatures you control get plus one plus one against vigilance to the end of turn. <coughs> For three mana, mm, I would say this, if it was a two mana card, I would say freaking fantastic. But three mana has used it of getting just like little creatures just to be chump blockers. But other than that, I, I would say it's a bit of a hit and miss card. <clears throat> Alright. Thank you, I need another mythic there. Ventress Transmuter. Free mana. My order will capture you alive. They don't specifically in what form. <clears throat> okay, four mana for four free is always good. Tap to creature creates a curse world token attached to it. I would say that's a not bad card. At least this is better than that Hex Spite Wizard. It's far better because, one, at least you can, like, tap to a creature, create a curse token attached to it. So, yeah, that's better compared to the Hex one. Far better. Leaping Ambush. Target gets plus one free and gains reach until the end of the turn. Untap it. <clears throat> Good way to stop flyers, so yeah, I could see using that. I mean, in a sideboard section, yeah, it'd be brilliant. Main deck, um, I'm not 100% sure on it. Cheeky house mounts. Okay. One mana for a 2 1, always good. Get back here, vile run. I was almost done cursing that ring. <clears throat> Sorcery, squeak by. Target you control gets plus one until the other turn. It can't be blocked by creatures with power free or greater. Ooh. The fact that it's a 1 mana 2 1 is always good. And the fact as well, <clears throat> you can buff a creature and if anyone with power 3 or greater is not going to block it. Can't be blocked by them. So I see great potential there. Integral Vault. Creature tokens you control get plus plus and visual. Ah, standard if you're doing tokens, so it's not bad. Tyron's Gutsy Exploration. <clears throat> 3 mana, so it's Simic. 3 1. Add green or blue, only to spend on casted mana, value 5 or greater spells. <coughs> With X in their mana cost. Um, You have to do a lot of... You have to make a deck that specifically works with him, I would say. Like with, with, with mana 5, value 5 or greater, or spells with X. So basically, he can be useful... But he has to have a deck that's going to deal with a lot of big stonkers. The end. Now, I ran into this recently, and this is a brutal card. This spell costs two less the cost if your total life points is five or less. Not the greatest, but it's the other ability. Exile target, creature, or planeswalker. Search for control. Give your hand library for any number of that card. I'll tell you right now. This is going to go into the Dark Despair deck, because... You kill any creature that you know they're going to have multiples of. Like, say, Shaladon. He plays one of them. I kill it. Right, let me find those cards. Get them out. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Hit me. Hit something there. 
This is a good card, and I will look at the decks when we talk with Spare, see where I can fit this and who could go out. Alright, so we're starting out to fit in the ranks. Obra's Dreaming Jewels. Okay, it's the Mere card. So, two mana for 2 2 with flying and flash. Okay, that is powerful. Whenever another fairy enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent. Why would you not use her? I mean, come on. A two mana. Flash flying, and every time you play a fairy card, it's just go right. You're going to lose life every time. <clears throat> That's obscenely good. I would say, I and I would be honest, this could be one of the cards that will probably make a deck. That's not a bad card, because if you're playing a fairy deck, it's blue, black. You play this card, and you go right, boom, on turn two. Like, I don't play anything, and they've done, and they've done something. You go right, boom. Next round, boom, another couple of fairs. Right? You're losing points, and I'm going to get a free smack on you. All right, four mana, four, four, three. Always good. Ferocious Werefox. Hmm. It has Trample. Always good. Create a monster world token. Attach it to target creature you control. So, you could go with the with the instant grand charge, which actually is pretty good. So, that's a good solid card, actually. Pretty solid. Conceded Witch has Menace. Free mana for a 2 free, always good. And Creative Witch token thing, Price of Beauty. That's not a bad card. These are pretty good, like, boggy cards if they're using the right decks. Plunge in the Winter. Alright. Two mana, tap up to one target creature, scry and draw a card. Um, It's not bad because you can go on your, on your turn, like, say, they hit an attack, right? Do that, tap on your own creatures. Get scry and draw a card. It's not bad. Feed the cauldron. Well, someone's getting chucked to the cauldron. Free mana instant. Destroy tar creature with mana value three or less. If it was your turn, the cre create a few to fruit token. Um. Right. Let's be brutal here. For something like cut down, this is like you're paying three times for something like cut down, but at least it's mana based. I would say it's a bit of a hit and miss card. If you've got a lot of weenies to deal with, that's a good card. But if it's not, yeah. <clears throat> Nasty fourth mother, third mother goose. Is the game telling me I should go Simic now? I'll look at the other decks. I'll look at the decks later on. But <clears throat> okay, we're starting now to you know thin the, trim the fat. Minecart Daredevil. Dwarf Knight. Three mana for four two. Okay, that's powerful. Ride the rails. Talk with your control gets plus one, plus two, plus one. That's not bad. It's an instant. Yeah, that's it. I'll be honest, it's not bad that. I mean, yeah, it's going to go to backside, but four mana for attack, it's it's going to kill something. It won't last long, but it'll kill something. In Breath Veteran. So for one mana, human knight. For two ones, not bad. <clears throat> Sacrifice Mimish and create a young hero roll token attached to another creature. <clears throat> Alright. Enchanted creature. Whenever this creature attacks, if it suffers free or less, put a 1 1 counter it. Oh! You know, I can see a combo between these two. Say, right, you play this one. Then this comes in. Then you attack and make it a 5 3. Then do it again, make it a. A 6-4. <clears throat> so this is good against, like, if you've got, like, weenus to make them a bit buffer. I mean, yeah, you got to sacrifice it, but it could be a good thing. Dark to large. T free mana for enchantment, okay? At the beginning of your upkeep, reveal the top card of your library and put that card in your hand. You like... Ooh. Oh, no, 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 no. That's just one you don't want to touch. Unless you've got a lot of life gain, that's a dangerous card. That would require you to really jury rig a life deck with this. <clears throat> spell stutter. Counter spell deck. Two mana. Counter target spell unless the control plays two. Plus additional one for each fairy you control. Do you remember that fairy I talked about earlier? You combo with that, that's just going to make that even more nasty. 
All right, errant interference, free mana. Prevent all damage to be dealt to you by, to you and creatures you control this turn by creatures. <coughs> Reminds me of fog, where you pay one mana and you just blocked everything. Well, this is the kind of same thing, but it's only against creatures. Oh, rat card, tangled colony. Tangled colony can't be can't block, but when tangled colony dies, create X black tokens, tokens where X. Is where the amount of damage dealt this turn. <coughs> All right. I I am looking at making the rat deck still, guys, because there's lots of new rat cards. So I'll have to look at the rat decks to see what they are. Thank you. Raid bombardment. <coughs> Free mana. Whenever a creature you control with two power or less, raid bombardment deals one damage. Ah, yeah. <coughs> It's the same as to the O1 in the Goblin deck. It's similar to that. An Otter Wizard? Frickle Familiar. Free mana for 2-2. Two, two. Not too bad. Okay, Blowsteam. Blowsteam deals 1 damage to any target. Flight. Whenever you cast an instant sorcery spell... <coughs> I'll be honest. He is specific for a red for a red blue deck. So it's basically Mizzet. But it's not a bad thing, actually, to pay 1 mana to, to deal damage on someone. On a, in target, it's not too bad. I'd plus the fact you summon it for free mana for 2 2 and become a free free very spell castle. So it's not too bad. Slumbering Keep God. One mana for 1 1. Whenever an, an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, scry 1. Slumbering God gets plus 1 to the end of turn for each enchantment you control. So basically, you have to do an enchantment deck to make him work. I mean, a 1 1 chump block is not a bad thing, but you need a lot of work on him. Spider food, spider food, free mana. Destroy one target artifact, champion, or creature with flying, and create a food token. Um, it's not bad actually. That's a pretty good card. I mean, you get a free life, you get life, and you also get rid of a pest. Ruby daring tracker. Okay, so this one's a red green. So this is for Gruul. Legendary human scout. Haste. Whenever ruby tracker attacks you while you're controlling a creature with power four or greater, ruby gets plus two, plus two at the end of the turn. Or you can add. It's not too bad that because he, he is a she is a to ramp things up, but <coughs> you need big creatures for her to make be a very effective creature. And our first legendary land of the day, <coughs> Rel relentless Bugovich. Enter the battlefield tapped. Add red or white one or red becomes a two two red with wild ox creature until the end of the turn. It's still a land. When tax plus one kind of on it on a target creature control. Right, so basically, it's not too bad because if you attack it, you're gonna put you're gonna buff someone else, but it's a land, and you need to have it to be free to from being attacked. So it has potential still as a good land card. <coughs> Secondary ability, fifty fifty. <coughs> As you can see, we're starting now. Fin the ranks. Flick a coin. Free mana. Flick a coin deals one damage to any target you create a token and draw a card. Not bad. You're doing one damage to something. You get, get a treasure token, which is extra mana, and you get a card. That's not a bad card. Pretty decent. Cut in. Four mana. Cut in deals four damage to a target creature. Create a young group. Yeah. I'll be honest. <coughs> four mana for a four damage spell might seem good, but by that point, you're either in danger or you've got control. So it's one of those meh cards. Unassuming Sage. Two mana for a 2 2, always good. When this enters the battlefield, you may pay two if you do sorcery. Plus one, plus one, and scry. Mm, there's the problem there, guys. You need four mana to make it have all its full abilities. But if you don't want to use its full ability, just use it for a 2 2 drop. It's always good, that. Scarecrow Guide. Two mana for a 2 1. Reach, add one mana of any color activated once each turn. <coughs> so it is good to stop like mana screwing, but at the same time, two mana for a 2 1 reach, not the greatest. Panic Runer. Sorry, Picnic Runer. Two mana for a 2 2, always good. Venture, stolen goodies. Distribute three plus one counters among any number of target creatures you control. Mm, I'll get that in a minute. Whenever Panic Runa attacks while you control a creature of four creator, Panic Runa gains double strike. 
So basically, guys, yet again, he needs to be in a deck where it has a lot of big stonkers. But his second ability isn't too bad. But the problem is, are you willing to keep him in your hand? I mean, if you get him late game, brilliant. But if you got an early game, you want to put something down just to try and throw some punches. Well, hello, Rat Noble. I'm actually glad I found got you because you're one of the things that I've, I've heard about you and I wanted to get you in a deck. Whenever another rat enters the battlefield under your control, exile up to one target card from your opponent's graveyard. At the beginning of combat, your turn, create a black rat token. Ooh. Oh, guys, I think my rat deck might be looking more promising now to do. I mean, like I said, I will have to look at the new stuff, see what's changed. <clears throat> Gallant Pie Wielder. Wait, a Dwarf for him pies? Three mana for two free. First strike, not too bad. Celebration. Those drink has double strike. As long as you have two more non-land permits enter the battlefield. Okay, he is quite powerful. If you got to look a couple of wieners and you throw him in, it's like, okay, I got double strike and he's three mana for two free. I would say that's pretty good. Candy Grapple. Ugh. What's this, the, the killer to models? Anyhow, two one instant. Bargain. Free plus minus my fin in the turn if the spell was bargain. Minus so basically, it's a death spell. Still a good one though. <clears throat> Vando Outrider. Free mana for four two. Okay. Can we buy power creatures with two or less? Okay, he's not bad. He's actually pretty good. But it's just um, the two backside candy initial without any buffs. He's going to be a bit down some problems. But if you buff him, he's going to be a nightmare. Food fight! Two mana, enchantment. Artifacts you control have two sacrifices. Artifacts deal one damage to any target equal to plus one number of permanent named food fight you control. So the more of them you have, the, be the more better it gets. Okay. That's one way to settle an argument. Have a food fight. Oh, a mythic. A new land. Crystal Grotto. And as a battlefield, scry one, add one, or pay one to add a color. Hmm. All right. Okay, but to be honest, I wouldn't bother with that. Unless I, I need something that's not, like, powerful. Arian's Tempting Apple, four mana. Leisure artifact food. When entering turn and as a battlefield, you gain control of a target creature until the end of turn. When tap that creature, gains haste. All right, so what does it do? Two mana. Sacrifice any apple, you gain free life. Okay. Two. So, Topo loses free life. Mm. I'm going to be honest. That one's a bit of a... It would have to play test and see if it's worth it the time, but... Mm, I don't know. I really don't know. Vampire rights. Two mana. Sacrifice creature, you control. Sacrifice creature, you gain one life. Draw a card. Hmm... I'm going to be honest, guys. 50-50. Stockpile Celebrant. So that's free mana for free two. Good. Stockpile Celebrant enters the battlefield. You may return another target on land permanent. You control to its owner's hand. If you do, scry two. Very good if you got like creatures like got like a bad enchantment. You go, right, I'm bouncing it back. Give it that enchantment. Then do that. All right. <coughs> Belligion of the Ball. Okay, that's a weird name. <clears throat> free mana for free free. Always good. So at the beginning of combat turn, if you have two or more non-land permits, enter the battlefield under your control this turn, plus one, and gains menace. A lot of wins with it will make it good, but free mana for free free. Never hurts. Rowan, the sign of war. Alright. Free mana for 4-2. Okay, but and menace. Spell you cast this turn or black and... Okay, turn... Uh, black and red cost X less, but X is the amount of life you've lost this turn. Right. Ooh, I'm going to be honest, that's a bit of a... I mean, don't get me wrong, that <coughs> it does have its potential, but it requires me to take a bit of damage. So i got to lose life somehow. I'm assuming this said it's all about lo loss of life, or gaining life. All right, we've got one here. Fairy fencing. X black. Tall creature gets minus and minus X cost. That creature gets an additional minus minus three at the end of the turn if you control a fairy 
as you cast it. <coughs> so basically, you can make that from like a four to God knows what. So it's not a bad spell. This is mainly for fairy decks. So if you got fairy deck, you'll be using it. Kindling heirloom, one. Red tar creature gets plus one, gains first strength. Stre so basically, it's like um, another card we've had seen before a while ago. So it, that's its replacement. <coughs> Stone splitting bolt, red X. It's got bargain. So one player deals damage to target creature or planeswalker. If it was bargain, deals it twice the damage. Ooh. <coughs> Kind of handy if you want to like pay if your face gets like a six six and you don't want to pay that much you only pay like four then give it a weak artifact you don't want and then kill it off so there is potential. <coughs> Brambo familiar. Is that a tanuki? No, it's a raccoon. Two mana for a two two always good. Add green okay that's decent. One plus green discard a card return Brambo family to its owner's hand. All right. Fetch quest. Mill seven cards, then put a creature or champ creature enchantment or land card from among the mill cards onto the battlefield. Oh unless you can find a way to get them back into your deck, that can be risky. But don't get me wrong, a two two drop is always good. Right out. One black. Up to one tall creature is minus one minus one at the end of the turn. You create one one black rat. Yeah, so basically, it's a... You're getting a free rat and also weaken the creature. Stroke of Midnight. <coughs> okay, someone's been taking the make out of um, Cinderella here. Free man instant. Destroy target non-land permanent. It's control and create one. That's not bad. That's pretty good. I mean, you get rid of a creature and you get a 1-1 one, one human. That's not bad. I'll say that's a good card. Edgewell in. In the battlefield, tap as in the battlefield, choose a color. Add one mana of the chosen color, sacrifice and return it a card as an adventure from your previous hand. So basically, you can either return the adventure or use it for a specific color. <coughs> so it's one way to avoid mana screwing. Sleeping Cursed Fairy. One mana for free. free. Whoa, that's powerful, but what, what's wrong with it? Flying War 2. That sounds good. Sleep Curse enters the battlefield, tapped with free. Oh, right. Here's the problem. You play it, you can't use a free turns. Oof, that's that's bad. But at the same time, I mean, a free free. It's there, and it's hard to get rid of. And plus the fact, I mean, you couldn't, you could still untap it with them um, with a spell on turn two. Will become untapped. Remove one of its instead. So basically, you can ramp it up quickly by doing that, but that's a lot of mana you have to pump in. Ooh, that could be a question mark. <coughs> Waste not. So, two mana. Enchantment. Whenever an opponent discards a creature card, create a blackback two zombie. Whenever an opponent discards a land card, add two mana. Whenever an opponent discards a non-creature, non-land card, draw a card. You're really relying on someone for... So basically, if you've got a discard like deck that card will be brilliant because you could do a lot of stuff with it <coughs> <coughs> okay more rats okay we really gonna have to look at the rat deck but first off dragon mantle one red channel a creature with dragon enters the battlefield draw a card creature has plus red this creature gets plus one in a turn not too bad good for like red decks Lord Skitter's Butcher. Three mana. When Lord Skitter's Butcher enters the battlefield, choose one. Create a 1-1 one, one black rat token. You may sacrifice another creature. If you do, scry then draw a card. Or creatures you control gain menace. Ooh. I could see a potential with him. <coughs> a definite potential. Wicked Visitor. Two mana for 2-2. Two, two, always good. When an enchantment you control is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, each opponent loses a life. Now... Barring that ability, I mean, a black 2-2 two, two drop for 2 is always good. Frostbridge Guard. Yet again, a 2-2 two, two for 2 with a good ability. That's a solid card. Commune with Nature. 1 mana and... Why have I got a feeling these animals are not friendly? 
like in Snow White, because that's I think this is mostly Snow White. <coughs> With the top five cards of your library, you may reveal a creature card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest of your bottom of the library in the order. <coughs> Welcome to Sweet Tooth. Okay, have you guys been watching Twisted Metal or something? Anyhow. <coughs> I know it's supposed to be the makeup Hansel and Gretel, but come on, with with the Twisted Metal like TV show, I mean come on, that's just that's just too easy. Create a one one white human token, create a food token, put X plus one plus count on top creature you control where X is the number of food you control. So if you're doing a food deck, you'll be using that card. <coughs> Gumdrop Poisoner. Alright. Free mana for free two. Okay. So it's one thing is 10 retreats. Instant. Create a food token. Not too bad. Life Link. Whenever Gumdrop Poisoner the battlefield, up to one target creature gets minus X minus up to the end of the turn where X is the amount of life you've gained this turn. Right. I could see a potential in her. That you, you play a couple of them, right? And then... You gain life somewhere, like get a life linker, then throw it down, you're gonna get someone. So it has potential. It just needs to be jury rigged properly. <coughs> Jonah Apprentice Sorcerer. Four mana for two five. Normally this is not normally good, but a five backside creature is gonna be hard to get rid of. You may look at the top cards of top card of your library. Once each turn, you may cast the instant or sorcery spell from the top of your library. You still have to pay the cost. And the time rule applies. Well, that's not bad, that If you got, like, say, if you're dealing with a creature that's pest and you suddenly got a removal spell just on the top of your deck and play it, that's potential. <coughs> Jonah's Stopgap. Four mana. Bargain. This, this spell costs two less to cast if you bargain. Return target on alarm to its hand. Th that's what I was saying. If you had these two together... That would make the deck. That would make it powerful because you play this, and this is on top of your deck, and you go boom, give it a monster. Torch Tower, one mana, instant. Torch Tower deals two damage to a target creature or planeswalker. If this skill was bargain, it deals three instead, and that permanent you scry one. If the permanent dealt damage by torch would dies, exile it. Yeah, I can see people up red decks using this because it is a good like two damage cards to give it a planeswalker or a creature. Stab wound. Okay, this looks a bit gruesome. <coughs> Free mana. Target gets minus two, minus two. At the beginning of upkeep, channel control that pay player loses two life. So if you put it on, let's say, if it was a free free, you put that on, makes one one one, they're going to lose two life turn. So it has potential. You just got to decide where you're going to use it. Spellbook vendor. Two mana for two, two. Always good. Vigilance at the beginning of the combat. You may pay one if you do. <coughs> so basically, if you pay free mana, you're going to get that ability on it. That's not a bad deal, to be honest. Not a bad deal at all. <coughs> all right. Oh, another mythic. And a rare. <coughs> Knight of Doves. Free mana for one free. Whenever the champion you control is put into the graveyard from battle, create a one one. Like, mm. nah, not good, guys. Unless you're playing a very heavy deck of enchantments, he's not worth it. So he's specific for a deck. <coughs> Rowan's Grim Search. Free mana. Instant. And as well as bargain, look at the top four cards of your library. Put up to two of them back on top of your library and AO the rest of your graveyard. If you draw two cards, you lose two life. Ooh. <coughs> so basically, you can manipulate the deck, but it also has a back, but it also has a bit of a downside. Cooped up. Two mana. A channel creature cannot... Yep. Yeah. <coughs> we know what this one is, guys. This is pretty much pacify, but with an added twist. So we know what that is. Sweet Tooth Witch. <coughs> Whenever Sweet Tooth Witch enters the battlefield, create a food token, sacrifice food token, player loses two life. Free mana, free two with that ability, and you gain free life. I would say that's a good deal. Very good deal. I've noticed most of the playing cards are actually pretty good. <coughs> I think what Magic's trying to do is trying to get these cards to be more usable than than like Legends and all that. Phyrexian on life. Free mana white. You don't lose the game if you have zero life or less. As long as you have zero life or less, all damage dealt to you through this source 
isn't affected. <clears throat> so basically, guys, if you're, you're not going to die unless you get rid of that card or you find some way to get rid of him. Oh! Well, I need that, actually. So that's got to be going up to 9. Up to 8. Thank you very much. Another mythic. Wow, well, rats are coming out thick and fast. <clears throat> All right. Vicious Vermin. Free mana for 2-1. One. Whenever she enters the battlefield, create a black 1-1 one, one top. Which you control. Whenever another... With this creature, whenever another creature you control dies, put a plus one on Vinicius Rat. Alright, so basically, if you could get a lot of creatures to die, he'd get stronger. Alright. Up, up the Beanstalk. Two mana for enchantment. When the other thing enters the battlefield, whenever you cast a spell with mana five or greater, draw a card. <coughs> so, Simic or Green Ramp. Right, catch a trainee. My enemy. Two mana for two one. Okay. Pest pollen for three mana. Create two black rat tokens. As long as you, it's your turn, rat train has first strike. Um hmm. I'll be honest. I'm on the fence with that one, I'll be honest. <clears throat> Aquatic Alchemist. Two mana for one free. Not bad. Element, bubble up. Sorcery. Put target instant sorcery card from your graveyard to the top of library. Ooh, potential. Whenever you cast your first instant of sorcery spell each turn, plus two. Ah, so basically, if you're playing spells, he gets powerful, or you play the bubble ability to get cards back. <coughs> Not bad. Curse of the Were Fox. Free mana. Create a monster with target, chance to target you. So whenever you do, that creature fights up to one target creature you don't control. Not bad, assassin card. You buff up a creature and you bash someone, so it's a decent card. <coughs> Tadal Rattler. Two mana for a 2-2, two, two, always good. Whenever a rat you control becomes blocked, he gets plus two until in a turn. Right, so this guy could be used in a red-black rat deck. Where you could go, right, I'm playing lots of rats. Any rat gets blocked, he gets stronger. Oh, whenever a rat you control becomes blocked, it gets plus two until in a turn. Hmm, interesting. Oh, thank you. <coughs> Double season. For five mana, if an effect that would cause one or more of your tokens on your control, it creates twice that many tokens instead of the effects. So basically, it's like token ma manipulation. Anyhow, moving on. I'm filling up the vote pretty quickly. <coughs> Gabby Giant, four mana for four free, not too bad. Mine creates a treasure token. He has reach, sacrifice an artifact or land, and draw a card. <coughs> Not too bad, actually. It's that's a pretty decent card. Pretty solid. Spell Scion <coughs> Coven. Four mana for two free. But what's his ability? Take it back. Return target spell to its owner hand. <coughs> Cover enters the battlefield. Each opponent discards a card. Yeah. I'm going to be honest. If you're actually doing a fairy deck, I wouldn't bother with this card. I think it's better for fairy. <coughs> we know you because we've seen you earlier. <coughs> now there, stalked by nightmares. Four mana for a 2 2. Legendary creature, human normal. Menace. Whenever it enters the battlefield, return to creature or enchantment card from your graveyard to your hand. Whenever an enchantment you control is put to the graveyard, plus one. Plus one. Yet again, it has to be enchantment heavy to use this card effectively. And for four mana, yeah, that's kind of pushing it. Told to Myra. One mana for one one. Ward. Yeah, it's from another card, to be honest. Not the greatest. I mean, it's a good early card if you want to use it for M. Um, but not the greatest. Territorial Witch Stalker. Two mana for a two free. Okay, you're good. Defender. Hmm. During combat turn, if you control a creature with four or greater, gets plus one at the end of the turn and can attack. So basically, you need big stalkers to make him work. But he's a good defender because you can use him as like a defend block to delay. See, right? I'm sitting here. You're going to have nothing to get through me for a little while, so I'll have some brief room. Hopeless Nightmare. One mana. One mana enters the battlefield. Each opponent discards two cards, discard card and lose two life. Whenever Nightmare puts, is put into the graveyard, scry two. That's not bad, that actually. Play that, and, and your opponent's going to lose a card and. 
two life. That's not bad. That's actually a pretty good card. <clears throat> Foresight Ritual. Four mana. Bargain. Look at the top four cards of your library. If the spell was bargain, look at the top eight cards of your library and said, put two of them into your hand, the rest of the bottom of your library. For four mana, mm, yeah, <clears throat> too much. There are better cards out there. I mean, the eight cards look as pretty good, but do you really want to risk losing that many good cards? Fairy Dream Thief. One mana for one one when it enters the battlefield. Draw basically draw a card. They put in the green, it's not bad. And draw a card, you lose a life. Not bad for one one in a fairy deck. Misleading mol molts. Four mana. Target creature target creature's owner puts it on the bottom of Yeah, so basically it just gives away creatures. To be honest, there are better spells. Charming Scoundrel. Two mana for 1-1. One, one. Haste. When Charming enters the battlefield, choose one. Discard a card, then draw a card. Create a treasure token or create a wicked roll token. Two mana for wicked roll token might be a better option for that. It's not a bad card, but yeah, you really, the rest of it just doesn't... The other two card, two ones are not worth it. it you'd be taking the third one every time. Lay of Lightning. Four mana. Lay of Lightning... It, is in your opening hand you may begin the game with it on the battlefield whenever you cast a spell you may pay one if you do lay a line oh it's the ley lines i remember these cards these were cards that like when you played something it would do damage it's not bad but if you get in your open hand great if not hmm question <coughs> to avail guide four mana for two free flying by Flying and celebration as long as this turn. Mm, not really good to be honest, guys. There are better ones out there. <coughs> Taken by nightmares. Four mana. Exile target creature. If you control an enchantment, scry two. It has potential, but there are betters, unfortunately, still. Good lord, what the hell are you? <coughs> Devour of Sugarmore. Four mana for a six. Six. Wow, that's powerful, but. Okay, what is the catch? At the beginning of your upkeep, you may sacrifice an artifact or enchantment token. If you don't, then tap him. There's the catch. You need artifacts to keep him running. However, you can have half for dinner, create a white, white human token and a food token. So basically, you could do this three times to get, so he gets free strikes, but... Yeah, that's kind of like you're gonna have to make him as a late game like deal. Don't get me wrong, it sounds powerful, but as soon as you lose artifacts, you're in trouble. <coughs> Griffin Airy. Two mana. At the beginning of your un end step, if you gain three or more life this turn, create a 2 2 Griffin. That's a powerful spot for white. You can easily do that with white. White can gain life very easy. Into the Fae Court. Five mana, draw three cards, create one blue blue token of flying. Can o and this creature can only block creatures with flying. Mm, I'll be honest, it's a free card, it's not bad, but is it worth it? Because I feel there's like there's better spells out there. <coughs> Shard Nimble Depths. Okay, so this is a four mana for a two free. Whenever Depths enters the battlefield, tap to creature in opponent controls. Put a stone count on it. Whenever the you tap one or more untapped creatures, your opponent controls, draw a card, triggers ability once each turn. So basically, it's all about controlling, tapping, and all that. So I could see that working in a bl with blue and white. Elvish Ar Archivist. Two mana for zero one. Whenever one or more artifacts enter the battlefield under your control, put two plus one count. Oh, triggers ability once each turn. <coughs> One or more champions enters the battlefield under your control. Draw a card. Right. So basically, if you play artifacts, she gets stronger. If you choose... I think it's a she or a he. I don't know. But um, if it's the only... So I could see potential in it, but you have to have a lot of artifacts to make this thing work. <coughs> That's what I'm getting.
Godwag's first duel. Create a curse or attack. Target one creature. So that's good. Scry 2. Whenever you cast your next instant or sorcery spell with mana free or less, just to copy that spell, you may choose a new target. At least this is better. I could see that being used because that could screw up a lot of people's decks. Charmed Clophoria? Four, five mana for free, free flying. Yeah, nah, nah. Not a good card. It's pretty bad. Five mana for that. A good seal card, but not a... Not a main decker. There are better cards. <clears throat> Snare Master Sprite. One mana for 1-1. One, one. There's a battlefield. You may pay two. When you do, tap target. Yeah. <clears throat> and again, 9-10 you probably won't use that unless you got that of a fairy, but... Mm. Where Fox Bodyguard. <clears throat> Three mana for 2-2. Two, two. Flash. Okay, you're starting to look more promising. Whenever the Fox Werefox Bodyguard enters the battlefield, exile up to one of a target non-Fox creature until the Werefox Bodyguard leaves the battlefield. Oh, so you can um, <clears throat> make a card as well. Okay, I think he is worth having in decks. Freya Sanity. Three mana. Enchant player. At the beginning of each end step, Enchant player mills X cards where X is the number of cards put into their graveyard from anywhere this turn. <clears throat> Ooh, begin of each step. Ooh, Jesus. So if you can, like, kill a lot of creatures and put that on. Like, you put that on first, then you kill a lot of creatures. Ooh, my, that can be nasty. <clears throat> Bestial Bloodline. Two mana. Channel creature gets plus two, plus two. Return. Yeah, it's a buff and, and return. It's not too bad. Root Rider Fauna. Two mana for one free. Um, I would say it's okay. It's an okay one. If you're doing like mana ramp, yeah, take it. But there are better. <clears throat> Shatter the Oath. Five mana. Destroy total creature or enchantment. Okay. Now, this is the first time I've seen Black have an enchantment breaker. But five mana is a bit much. If it was four mana or three mana... Yes, but five mana, ooh, push it. <clears throat> Disdainful stroke. Yeah, counter target spell that's for a greater. <clears throat> there are better ones, but if you need something that's going to deal with big stonkers, you're going to need that. A second one of you. Oh, well, yep, you're, you're making my rat deck one more plausible now. Grasp of Fate, free mana. When Grasp of Fate enters the battlefield, each opponent exiles up to one target non-land permanent, which also Grasp of Fate leaves the battlefield. Eh, it's okay. I'm getting a lot of the rat cards here. Quick study. Free mana, draw a card. Eh. Usable. Decent. Ice out. Bargain. Cost one of the bargain. So basically you can give it an artifact to make it in. Um, two mana, encounter target spell. It's standard affair. <clears throat> Twisted Fealty. Free mana. Gain control of a target creature until the end of the turn. Tap it. Gains haste and wicked token. Uh, not bad, actually. You could use a creature, smack it on someone, and give someone else a good plus one, plus one. So, it's not a bad card. I gotta admit, it's pretty good. <coughs> All right. The white, so we've got the same one as the bullvine one earlier. <clears throat> one for white black nightmare creature until the end of turn, still land whenever attack defending player loses two life. You gain two life. That's not bad, that's pretty good actually. That is a pretty good card. We're reaching the end, guys. <clears throat> Tempest Heart, four mana for four free, decent. Scan the clouds a minute. Draw two cards and discard two cards. Mm, that's a bit of an issue. Trample. Whenever you cast a spell with mana fire greater, plus one, plus one. <coughs> Yet again, this requires you to be at Simic or high, like, green ramp decks. Wild and Archolite. Free mana for a 2 2. Put target permanent card from your graveyard to the top of your library. That's not too bad, actually. <coughs> Draw 
yeah, he's actually a pretty good card. I would get it. I'll get him in the green white deck. And the end. Okay, I'm getting some decent cards. <coughs> We had all them. Tailing the kindly lord. Four mana for free for flying. And there's a battlefield, choose number between one and ten. When your opponent casts a spell with a mana power or top is equal to the chosen number, that player loses two life. If you and you draw a card. This one is a guess game, but if you get it right, it could be it could make a lot of headaches for your opponent. <coughs> Quite a lot here. Impact Tremors. Two mana. Whenever you whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, impact tremors is one damage to each opponent. Nice. Good for like um like aggro decks. Ice Rough Sentinel, free mana. Vigilance. Whenever Ice Rough Sentinel attacks, you may pay like one pay what we do. Tap target creature opponent controls. Whenever you tap an untapped creature, ooh, get stronger. I could see him use for this guy. <coughs> living Lacrogen. Okay, two mana for zero four. Sacrifice Living Lacrogen to draw a card. And create a source of road token. Meh. I'll be honest, not that great. I mean, it's a good defend card, but to be honest, that's all he's going to be. <coughs> Frozen Place. Ta tap target creature and put a free stone counter. Okay, that's very powerful. That is very powerful. Sovereign of the Sleeping. Free mana, two free visions whenever an enchantment you control is put into the graveyard, plus one, plus one. Again, you need to be heavy enchantment deck to make this guy work. We've, we've got you. And remember here, we've seen you earlier. Oh, another. Wow, I'm, I'm racking up that. Moment of Valor, free mana. <coughs> Choose one. Untapped target creature gets plus one, plus zero, and gains the struggles in the turn. Or destroy a creature with four greater power. Not a bad card, actually. That's pretty good. Archive Dragon. Five mana. Sorry, six mana. Flying Ward. When active in the battlefield, Sky 2. Mm. A good seal card. I mean, don't get me wrong. He's still good in Constructed. But on, it's standard only if you're playing Simic or Ramp. But that's pretty much it. Agatha. The Vile Cauldron. Two mana. Active abilities of creatures that you control cost X less active where X is files cauldron's power effect. This effect cannot be reduced. The mana costs less more than one. Okay, you can get plus one and gain chance in a hasty turn. Um, I'll be honest, she requires a lot of mana work. So, I would say uh, probably not. Unless you can make a deck work around her. Brave the Wilds. One green, bargain. If this spell was bargain, target land you control becomes free free elemental creature with haste, still land. Search your life for a basic land card, revealing So basically it's mana ramp. Not a bad one actually, it's pretty good. Callous sword cell sword. Two mana for two two. Always good. Burn together sorcery. Target creature you control deals damage equal to the power of any target, then sacrifice. Yeah, this is only good if you got like a creature who's about to die. <coughs> so, and there's a bag of plus plus count on each creature you could that died under your control this turn. I could see what you do with this guy. You, you throw a lot of cards out, they get smashed up, any killed, he gets powerful. Ground seal, two mana. When a ground seal enters the battlefield, draw a card. Cards in the graveyard cannot be target of spells or abilities. Ooh, that's nasty. Black will hate that card. <coughs> Descent Dragon. Four mana for a 4-4. Four, four. Standard. Expensive Taste. Exile the top two cards of, your, of a target opponent's library face down. You may look at them and play those cards as long as they remain exiled. Flying and Tremor. Whenever the Descent Dragon attacks, create a terrorist token. That's not too bad. That's pretty good. <coughs> oh no, Mythic. Transit Lookout. Free mana for a 2 2. For 2 3. Whenever it enters the battlefield, draw a card. That's not bad. That's pretty good. A good card. 
<laughs> I'm two feet and you draw a card. That's not bad. Archon of the Wild Rose. Four mana for four, four. Flying. Other creatures you control that are enchanted by auras you control have the base power. Ooh, so if you're doing a heavy enchant deck, you've got to play this guy. You've got to have him in your deck. Defense of the Heart. Four mana. At the beginning of your upkeep, if an opponent controls three or more creatures, sacrifice Defense of the Heart, search your library up to two creature cards, and put those cards onto the battlefield. That's kind of powerful. Very powerful. You can search any card, so if you could, you might want to pick some big, big stonkers to go in. That could be nasty. Evolving Wilds, we know that very well. It's just basically tap, get a land. Pickpocket Prankster. Two mana for a free one. Flight Vigilance. Mill four cards and put an instant sorcery fairy or fairy card among the free mill cards into your hand. Yeah, I wouldn't probably do that. That's a bit batshit. Extraordinary Journey. Okay, this is a bit of a weird one. So, two blue, two X's. X out of the X tall creatures for each of those cards the owner may play as if they were as long as it means exile. Whenever one or more non two equals enters the battlefield, one or more enters the exile. Okay, yeah, that's a. That's a <coughs> that is a long ass thing to say for an enchantment. But it's mana heavy. You need a lot of mana to make that work. A lot of mana. Half the element. Six mana. Discard your hand, then draw two cards. That's only good if you're in a situation where you've got no cards in hand. This spell costs X less cost, where X is the number of cards in your graveyard that are instance cards, sorcery, or adventure cards. Right. For six mana out of the bat, that's bad. But the fact that you can cheapen it with each one, so every time you use a spell, he will get um, cheaper. <coughs> Mocking Sprite. Free mana for 2 1. Flying is a source you cast, costs one less. It's not bad for, for spell casting, but other than that, hmm. Protective Parents. <coughs> free mana. New Peasant for free 2, not bad. When Peppa dies, creates a young hero token. I'll say that's okay, it's decent. <coughs> we know you. <coughs> Hardened Scales. One mana. If one or more plus one plus one would be put on a creature you control, that many plus one plus one counter put on it instead. So basically, buff up shenanigans. <coughs> My goodness. <coughs> Shapeshifter. All right, we're starting to move now. Monstrosity. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry, I need a drink. Two mana for free one, create a food token. That's not bad. Good way to get life quick. <coughs> Merry Bards. Free mana for free free. There's the battle for you. You may pay one. You know, attach you. Yeah, you require four mana to use that. I mean, don't get me wrong. A free mana for free two is still okay. <coughs> Blind obedience. Two mana extort. Other artifact creatures your opponent controls into the battlefield tapped. Okay. Oh, a second one of them. Nice. All right. Now these packs, guys, are the mythic packs. So we'll be getting a lot of mythic stuff. <coughs> Damsure Witch. Free mana for free two. Not bad. Bargain. Matthew. If it was bargain, create a curse roll token to the opponent's monster you control. That is pretty that's pretty good that. You have like a weak artifact, you could use that. Titanic Grove, plus four plus four growth. No surprise there. Vol virtue of loyalty. <coughs> Five mana. At the beginning of your end step, put plus one plus one on each creature you control. Untap those creatures. Create or fealty created knight. That's not bad, that's pretty good. That for a champion, you go right. 
like make a few knights on the way and then you put that down you can do a lot of like shenanigans <coughs> all right and next slot hired spear guard one mana for one one haste not the greatest but a one one drop never hurts and it has haste you can do a quick attack very assassin sting blade assassin four mana for three one flash flying and as a battle destroy tall creature and opponent controls that was dealt damage this turn so it's not bad like it's a removal spell but mm, i'm not convinced by it boundary land ranger two mana for two two always good at the beginning of combat you turn if you control a creature with four greater you may discard a card if you do draw a card yeah you're not going to use that ability but the fact that two two drop i wouldn't argue it no, you're back with another one, okay? Hurricane's Glory, one mana. Target creature gets two plus two until the end of turn if the spell was bargain, lifelink, flying. Not too bad. That's not bad if you got like some like late game artifacts. Return Triumphant, two mana. Return Triumphant. Return target creature card with mana free of value or less from your graveyard to the battlefield and create a cloak. Not bad that if you've got like a weak creature that you just want to put back as a chump blocker. It's not a bad way to get him back. Hatching plans. <clears throat> okay. Two mana. When hatching plans put into the graveyard from battle, draw three cards. Okay. Well, we know when you've seen you earlier. Wow, we're going through this, guys. We'll get there eventually. Break the spell. One mana. Destroy target enchantment if the permanent you control. If you. If a permanent you control or a token was destroyed this way, draw a card. Aubrey's Attendance. Instant, parry, minus four, zero. Five mana for... F mm, I'll be honest. I would rather have the other ability than the actual creature. <coughs> Prophet Prism. Two mana. When a prophet enters the battlefield, draw a card. Add one mana of any color. Um, the card draw is great, and adding color means, yeah, you're going to avoid mana screwing, but it's like trading one for one. Grand Ball Guests. Two mana for a 2-2, two, two, always good. Celebration. It's possible as long as you have two more non-land permanents that enter the battlefield under your control this turn. Yeah, you're never going to get the Celebration off, but the other one, you will get a good, um, like, good value out of him. Three of you now, so... <coughs> Ginger Brute. A food golem, one mana for one one. Haste, Ginger Brute cannot be blocked this turn by, except by creatures with haste. Sacrifice him. So maybe you can use him just to go right, I'm gonna pop your one, then sacrifice you for Greta Sweet Tooth Scourge. Hans of the Greta, guys, I told you they'll be in there somewhere. Free mana for free free, always good. And it's about to create a food target. Sacrifice the food, put one plus count on target creature. Or sacrifice food. You draw a card and lose a life. Why wouldn't you use her? That's a pretty good card. Return of the Wild. Three mana. Choose two. Search your life for a basic land card. Put it onto the back of your tap. Then shuffle. Create a 1-1 one -one human or food token. But you're 9 to 10. You're going to take the, the land and the bloody am food. Come. That's a pretty good card. That. Pretty good. <clears throat> Beautiful Griffin. Five mana for four. Four flying. Sacrifice two enchantments. To, nah. Nah. Bad card. Very bad card. <coughs> Virtue of Persistence. Six. Sorry, seven mana. Oof. Sorcery. Target is plus minus minus three. And you gain two life. At the beginning of your upkeep, target creature card from your graveyard is a benefit under your control. I don't like the cost, but the secondary ability, the source ability, is pretty good because you're gaining life and you can get rid of creatures. Oh. Okay. Oh, I missed one. I just saw that. My bad. All right. Witch Stalker Frenzy. Four mana. This spell costs one less to cast for each creature that attacked this turn. Deals five. 
uh, that's not bad that actually because if you've got like three or four creatures attacking and there's a big stonker you can just go right boom so it has potential but it has to be done in a specific deck bitter chill two mana enchant turn creature when bitter chill enters the battlefield tap enchanted creature the creature does not tap during cruel and tap stage my base is put into the graveyard from the battlefield you may pay one if you do scrying to draw a card yep i know that and a deck i'm gonna hate that when i see it Ah, oh, the Ice Crown. Four mana for four free. Not bad. Whenever you tap an untapped creature an opponent controls, you may pay one you do choose one. Create a 4-4 four, four blue elemental, put a plus plus on each creature you control, or scrying then draw a card. <clears throat> so if you're playing a lot of tappy shenanigans, she will be an absolute monster to deal with. We're nearing the end, guys. Tough cookie. Two mana for two two, always good. Whenever two ends the battlefield, create a food token, even better. Target non uh, non creature artifact you control becomes a four four artifact creature at the end of turn or sacrifice and gain free life. I will say that's a pretty good card. A very good card. Splashy spellcaster. Four mana. Whenever you cast a single awesome. Ooh. That has potential, but you're gonna have to really um you know, make a deck around it. Ah, the very artwork that everybody looks at. Enter it, the Charmed Apple. Free mana for 2 4. Each creature that's a channel by an aura you control cannot attack you. Or planeswalkers you control. Oh, oh, she seems a bit powerful. At the beginning of your end step, each opponent loses X life where X. You gain X life with the number of auras you control. So if you play a white black aura deck and you play her, it's like, yeah. <clears throat> so basically, each creature that enchanted by an aura you control cannot attack you. Hmm. Also, it can't attack you or planeswalkers. Okay, interesting. I'll have to see how that works. <coughs> Kindred Discovery, f 5 mana. And as a battlefield, choose a creature type. Whenever that cre a creature you control is cho of the chosen type, in the battlefield, draw a tog. So you draw a card. Tog. <laughs> the English is gone, guys. <coughs> Unruly Catapult. Defender, 3 mana for a defender. Unruly Catapult deals 1 damage to each opponent. Whenever you cast an instant sorcery, untap it. I can see what you can do with this. You can go, boom, play spell, reset. Boom, spell, reset. I can see what you can do with this. <coughs> Hermlet Glutton, 7 mana. So it has a bargain. This spell costs 2 less of your bargain. So it goes from being a 7 to 5. Trample 1, it does gain free life. Great um, card for... Um, Seal, but not for main game. Unless you're playing the big stonker one. Balloon Gatekeeper. Entry denied. Return target creature you don't control with mana value three or less to its owner's hand. Uh, nah, I wouldn't bother that one to be honest. Chancellor of Tales. Four mana for a two free flying whenever it enter. Whenever you cast an adventure spell, you may copy it and may choose a new target. It has potential, but mm, not a fan of it. All right, a giant noble. This is the first. Free mana, so it requires green. Oh, you could have to use a tri deck. Seeking frills. Mill seven cards and put all the cards that are of an adventure from the among the mill to your hand. Trample. Permanent spells you cast have an adventure cost of one or less. So basically, if you're doing lots of adventure decks, she would be a, a useful card. But you have to go in free colors, so that's a bit of a risk. And the last one. <coughs> Well, nothing, but hey, I'm not going to argue. That helps. And that is it, guys. So with all the new cards, I'll have to look at decks and all that. So I might do another, like, a couple of, like, drafts. But as for standard goals, we'll have to wait till I get through the decks and packs and see what I'll do. But hey, folks, that's it for the video. If you like the videos, please like, share, and subscribe. Ring the dinner bell. I'll see you on the next Magic the Gathering Arena. Catch you later.